hi guys welcome back to farmer on fire this is the show where you learn all things about farming what are the challenges of farming how to avoid those pitfalls how we can learn for, from those who have been there before us today we are discussing who is Wangari and in my rabbit farm, strawberry farm and mushroom farm we are going to see how I maneuver and I'm able to even produce videos. We discuss urban farming here and we also discuss what are the ways that we are going to make money from agribusiness. It has to make money. It has to make money guys. And why farming? why not farming i have come to realize that farming is my calling it's my purpose it makes me feel energized it's the reason i wake up every day when i'm making this content for you about farming i'm always excited because surely this is what fuels my life when i'm able to share what are my challenges and what i'm going through that day so farming has been something that has been feeding my soul and it's also making me money and i'm also able to introduce other people as a low entry industry when i was retrenched in 2017 i didn't have anywhere to look any i i even had a deficit i didn't have any money i had a backless loan so it means i had to figure out my life and where i was i remembered my mom used to have a kitchen garden and i'm here thinking why can't i also have one at least i'll i'll save um the money that goes into vegetables in my household and you might think ah uh, you started farming because you wanted to save money for skooma but if you calculate over time in a year how much skooma how much kunde how much cabbage do you spend on then if you grow it how much will you also spend on that and see if it's profitable for you so the first step is starting where you are starting small and then just scaling it up because you'll have learned the lessons from even the small experience that you might have so for us we are just in kitengela urban and what i encourage people to farm in the urban areas is because of ready market people in the urban areas rarely farm they wait for people in moranga people in shags to farm and bring them food but i'm saying take back control take back take back take back the challenge and grow your own food start small and see how else can i add this into my food system the other thing is it's income generation also you are also teaching your kids you guys see i farm with my kids and you're also teaching your kids that this it might not you know always be rosy it might not always be a desk job a lot of young people are suffering because they can't get jobs a lot of people are in my inbox telling me wangare ni tafutie job and i feel you because i was in that situation i was retrenched i couldn't be able to get back my desk job and so i had to refigure out my life and i can say farming is good keeps you away from traffic you're not wasting a lot of man hours on traffic you're just at home bonding with your plants and your animals and for me it's been a joy the type of farming i specialize in is farming that is not back breaking because i am not about you know growing the same maize and beans like our parents used to do we have just decided i need to advance i need to polish this i need to own more in the value chain because production is not enough what else can i add to whatever i'm growing so that i can be able to get better profit margins so i'm in rabbit keeping and here we are able to sell the yuri we are able to sell breeders we are able to sell rabbit for meat and we are able to help people with building of structures because rabbit creeping number one is the structure it has to be self-cleaning because of ammonia challenges if your rabbits are exposed to ammonia they will start getting sickly and they might die so it starts with the structure number two you can buy pellets from the shop and just feed them so they don't need a lot of care compared to something like chicken to something like goat or cows so for me i looked at also something that will still make me money and as you hear when they say bunnies give birth <laughs> people giving birth like bunnies they really reproduce a lot and in that way i'm able to increase my breed to a number that i can be able to reach the market with then i also uh, farm strawberries strawberries are, are a joy when kids come for farm visits uh, people can to for farm trainings in my farm i really see them glow when they are experiencing the farm 
the strawberry farm strawberries just give people joy one the color it's bright red two very sweet fruits three nutritious and three it's a bit bougie strawberries are not eaten for everyone when was the last time you ate a strawberry exactly my point so i'm able to produce very little and get high value from it if i was to i sell a panet of strawberries for 100 shillings but if i was to produce skumas for 100 shillings it is a lot because a kilo of skuma which is this big goes for around 20 shillings so for me to make a hundred bob from skuma i need to have farmed so much and remember i am an urban farmer so i'm also looking at my semantics so don't just go copy pasting everything you're hearing or reading about farming personalize it customize it ask yourself do i have space what can i still grow even if i don't have space i am also a mushroom farmer and I encourage people who are experiencing emptiness syndrome if your daughter or your son moved out make that spare bedroom your mushroom farm mushroom is soilless agriculture which means you don't actually need to go and till your land to farm mushrooms you can still do it even in the comfort of your home yeah so these are the kind of ideas farmer on fire is about it's about thinking differently it's about owning more, more of the value chain we also do value addition of whatever we produce so we are able to get a better price so like the mushrooms we dry them and we grind them to make mushroom powder for sale at a better price we also make a uh, strawberry powder for a better price and also to increase the shelf life because as you know mushrooms and strawberries are highly perishable and if you don't have a reliable market or you're off grid like we are it can tend to be a challenge accessing the market so think 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 how else can i limit my challenges and get ahead Urban farming is the use of small spaces to create food for other people who are within your vicinity. What I have found about urban farming is that whatever I'm, produ I'm producing, I'm able to sell it with ease because there are other people who want to eat the same food. They want to know the source of their food. And so as an urban farmer, when I'm producing, people can watch from their houses and see that this is a safe food production. I also have a lot of mamamboggers asking and querying all the time on my phone on if they can come for their mboggers and their general vegetables from my farm. So I would say the number one thing about urban farming, you might have limited space but you have ready market which is always a good thing. So inquire around, ask your neighbors what do you lack? Would you like to have managu at get from price? Do they have to go to the soko where they don't know where the managus are coming from and that kind of struggle my point is with urban farming you can be able to recalibrate and see in the space that i have can i still make something in the two three feet that i have or two three meters can i still make my urban garden and become you know at least for my smoothies i can have a few leaves for my skumas and that's what urban farming it is it starts like that and then once you learn the skill of how to do something the idea is just to scale it up and at that point you can go back to the countryside and do it in a professional way so urban farming is not only for people who want to make money who don't have land but also it's a training ground for people who would like to go large and do it commercially and probably even do telephone farming because they are already exposed to the idea on what it takes to run an urban farm i think if i was not farming i would probably be a teacher because at the end of it all if i look and calculate what i'm basically into it's about education it's about enlightening people it's about inspiring people you guys know in my channel i kind of mix and do a remix of videos where i'm inspiring people and showing them that i went through this journey my therapist helped me
be able to get your vitamins right there and then number two it is high in zinc and high in magnesium it is a protein and a vegetable at the same time the other thing it helps with building of immunity and helping in terms of corona you guys know that you've been told you need to increase your intake of zinc supplement your zinc and this is the natural way to supplement your zinc into your system to so that this way of wave of corona doesn't hit you so mushroom are my best friend i make sure at least every breakfast i have mushroom in it i have my eggs i mix them or sometimes it's separate but i have to take mushrooms every day because i want to build my immunity by the time i'm 50 and 60 my body is already having those nutrients naturally um the other reason why i love mushrooms is that value for money we go back to a high value crop at a small in terms of quantity so as you can see i don't have to read i don't have to you know there is not so much into the process of mushroom i just need to sanitize them so that there is no competing fungi i put the seed and then i come here and the fruit i just need to put some water and the fruit naturally and i keep harvesting every two days they are out and this is about 200 bucks so that can bring me about 10,000 shillings twice a week that's not bad for my money urban farming is about realizing what is your limitation for myself my biggest limitation is space and with mushroom farming i can be able to still produce optimally and profitably within a small space so yes i will be doing mushroom for years to come what should i be doing 10 years on the same thing i'm doing because i tried with a lot of things i tried with skooma i tried with you know capsicum tomatoes i've been there done all that and i've figured this is my thing this is where i use less of my energy and when i'm training people on how to start farming i also encourage them to try with everything and figure out what is your vibe we source our seedlings from local and also internationally we like looking at the properties not necessarily where it's coming from but what qualities does that seed have is it more resistant to certain pests to certain weather conditions and that's what we go for we go for a stronger seed because we believe that will give us more production but we can't also forget that our own uh, natural foods our own traditional foods they might not be a superior in quality but they have better taste in terms of they have more natural things in it not so much has been removed because science might think it's redundant so we look at both qualities and we are able to also produce seeds for ourselves so that we can also sell to other people for example our mushroom seeds are sourced in Kiambu so we're able to get that uh, and our tomatoes we buy them from Amiran um, our strawberries strawberries are not uh, grown from seeds they are grown from seedlings and we are able to propagate that ourselves and sell to people who would like to start seedling farming our rabbits we have breeders and so we are able also to sell those breeders to other people who would like to start the venture so it's mixed it's both local and international sourcing nothing in life lacks challenges and also as an urban farmer my biggest challenge is lack of space I would like to scale up what I've already learned and I have done that in my garlic farm. I have gotten a land in Maasai land where they have drilled borehole water and I'm able to farm. The biggest challenge is irrigation. Water is expensive. I pay up to 100 uh, shillings per cubic meter compared to Nairobi water which usually goes for around 20 shillings and you can imagine I'm um, irrigating about three to five acres of land every day and at the end of the month you find that you have used so much water that is cutting down on your profits. The other challenge of urban farming is that you find your neighbors are also trying that out because 
an urban farm means that you are also farming in a place where people are residential. There are not as many apartments, so they are also having the kitchen garden. They've been listening to farmer and fire saying, become independent and produce your own food. So the other that challenge I would say for myself is it's very hot <laughs> this arid climate can get extreme but i'm happy that i'm able to get secrets and practices like for myself there are products and fertilizers that i use that are drought that help my crop become more drought resistant which means i don't necessarily have to irrigate the crop but it will continue I was walking around age two, three, four. My dad used to call me Wagare Madai. Um, I like that she was selfless in her cause, in making sure that the biggest thing was impacting people and teaching them what is the right way to do things. And I feel that has been my purpose, and I want to continue doing that. The mod, the other person who is alive who inspires me is. Um, Deputy President Ruto, I like that he's self-made. He started as an, you know, egg hawker in Akuru and I really find that inspiring. Would I advise my kids to join me in this venture? Mm. I think that's a good question. I do and I believe they should because one thing, we are trying to get them away from screens. So instead of them being on their PS, on their laptop, on their tablets, let them come and enjoy nature. Nature is healing in that way. Number two, as much as yes, they become what they become and they become what they think they can become, I won't also force farming to them, but they will learn knowing the skills through the kind of interruption, interaction that I'm giving them. I'm very intentional in having them in the farm, playing in the mud, and loving the soil. So in that way, I'm hoping that they will always know that they have a background in farming and they can always fall back on it. Even if they aspire to do other careers, they can always know at the end of the day, I can still control what I produce or even make money from farming. So. My job as a parent is to expose my children to op different opportunities, different things. I don't believe in acad academic route only. I believe in exposing your children to as many careers and many routes as possible. And then their decision is there. So that's what I'm doing. I do encourage kids to do farming. A lot of schools bring their kids to our demo farms to see how things actually grow and to know that manure is not poop, it's not bad. Plants actually love manure. You know, like fruits and tomatoes actually grow in this kind of way to bring the practicality of the book to their vision. Yeah, so I love farming. Why wouldn't I not want to share it with everyone? And yeah, farming has been good to me. I understand farming can be a pain to a lot of people and so they would not encourage their kids to do the same. I remember when I started farming, my dad, you know, a graduate, a master's graduate and their farming, that was not sitting well with him. So he sent my mother to come and actually talk to me, you know, and see and check where is my mind at, what is my intention, where do I want to do. 
because in him he expected me to follow the different template but I ended up farming and this is what I do and he can see in my spirit and just the person that I am that I was meant to be a farmer and I was meant to be a teacher to teach others as well. Remember we are spiritual beings, our soul connect with other things differently so for me it has been those three things rabbits strawberries and mushroom for you it could be cows for you it could be arrow roots so try everything and figure out what rhymes well with my spirit and my soul and then you'll become a successful farmer